Now before we talk about self-action leadership, we need first to address the concept of self-leadership. Self-leadership is defined as follows. I'll let you read that on your own. Isolating it down into its essence, it's just simply the leadership of self, which means know it or not, not like it or not, we're all self-leaders. The question is not whether we are, the question is how effective we are at leading ourselves. And the goal, of course, is to increase that effectiveness. Now, self-leadership says, as Gandhi once said, that you must be the change you wish to see in the world or any other entity of which you are a part. Self-leadership requires proactivity. In the words of Stephen R. Covey, proactive people develop the ability to choose their responses, making them more products of their values and decisions than their moods and conditions. Now I want you to think for a second, when you wake up every morning, I want you to think of the person that pops into your mind when you are getting ready or driving to work, who you're thinking, now what is the emotional flavor of the day going to be today? Or the emotional flavor of the week? That highly volatile person. You never really know quite what you're gonna get. They're unpredictable. They are, their lives are governed more by mood and condition rather than values and decisions. That's the reactive person. Self-leaders are the proactive people. And now I would like for you to think in your mind, who's that person that you wake up in the morning or you go to work with, and they are the one who is uniquely unflappable. Come rain, come snow, come sleet, come hail, their positive attitude and effective work demeanor will prevail. That's what I'm talking about when I talk about the proactive person the self-leader. Now self-leadership is about designing your own world. Another great quote from Dr. Covey, we are responsible, he says, for our own effectiveness, our own happiness, and ultimately I would say for most of our circumstances. Now notice he says most here, not all. We don't live in a world where everybody starts off on equal footing. It's not a fair playing field when we start out in life. So he does not say all. Furthermore, bad things sometimes happen to good people, and it's not of their doing. Sometimes bad things happen to good people because good people did something that was irresponsible or negligent. But other times bad things happen of no fault of their own. Drunk driver hits them on the road, not a whole lot you can do about that, usually. But proactive people have the capacity to say, regardless of what happens to me, I can still choose how I respond to what happens to me. And therein lies my greatest destiny, regardless of where I started out. This is why, and especially in the great United States of America, our country where we live, this is why people like Oprah Winfrey can go from poor female African American in rural Mississippi, poorest state in the Union, during when segregation was still the rule of the day, to where she is now, one of the most influential people in the world the first African-American female to become a billionaire with a B. That's why we can get people like Oprah. Because you give someone like Oprah 30 years and proactive self-leadership, she'll change the world. Responsibility, one more time from Dr. Covey, the ability to choose your response, making you a creator of your experience rather than merely a victim of your circumstance. All of us have our own little world a metaphorical world, if you will. And in this world, there are certain things that we can control. And in the universe, wherein this world resides, there are certain things that we cannot control. And the only things, in all of my research, the only things I've been able to come up with that we really truly can control are three things. What I think about, what I say, and what I do. And when you think about it, that's not a lot of control. Most of the things and, and all of the people in this world and universe, we can't directly control. We might be able to influence, but we cannot actually control them. We can only control ourselves. Therefore, the proactive person spends most of his or her time focusing on what I can do inside of my world, not outside, because I can't control the outside stuff, but I can control the inside stuff. And in the words of Otto Rank and Plutarch, they both are credited with saying this, one of my favorite quotes, 
of all time, they say, what you become inwardly changes your outer reality. I've seen these truths in my own life. I didn't come out of the womb with a suit on teaching seminars. In fact, the first time I tried to teach professional seminars, the organization didn't invite me back. The second time, the organization said, try again in five years. All of you are familiar with failure. All human beings have experienced failure. I'm no different. And what I have become in my own career is not a result of changing anything outside of me, but it is focusing my efforts on what it is I could control. Because therein I, lies my power to create my destiny. To change my outer reality, which is why I'm in a suit teaching a professional audience today instead of uh, digging weeds for someone like I did back when I was a teenager. Nothing wrong with that. That was a great job when I was there. But I didn't want to be digging weeds for the rest of my life. Self-action leadership has helped me to do that. Not because I got angry at my boss and said, you need to give me a better job, but because I said, wait a second, you need to become something, Jordan, if you want something better than this. Now, why is self-leadership important? And what does it have to do with leadership, generally speaking? If we ever hope to be effective leaders of others, we need first to be able to lead ourselves effectively. How can you expect to lead a team or a group if you can't self-regulate, self-control, self-discipline your own life? Dr. Christopher P. Neck, Dr. Charles P. C. Manns, these are the two most prolific scholars in the world on the subject of self-leadership. Christopher Neck was actually a member of my dissertation committee. Great guy. Charles Manns founded the field back in 1983. Wonderful, wonderful men. They practice what they preach. Our world's desperate need for leadership. It's no secret that there's a Darth, a vacuum of leadership, both in our nation and throughout the world. How can we expect to create or to develop the leaders we need if we don't first have the self-leadership capacity germinating inside those would-be leaders? Some quotes for you. Lee Ellis, a good friend of mine and a colleague, is a former prisoner of war, served five and a half years in the famous Hanoi Hilton over in Vietnam. Remarkable, remarkable. He was an Air Force fighter pilot. And down his plane went after, fortunately, he survived those five and a half hellish years. And in intervening years, he's become a leadership expert and consultant. This is what he says. One more quote, famous religious leader and author, Gordon Hinckley. We all know how important leadership is, but how are we gonna ever have it if we don't first have self-leadership? Also, the need for SL at all levels of an organization. James G.S. Clausen, esteemed professor, Darden Graduate School, University of Virginia, tells us this. This is a profound quote, because oftentimes, and even in the early days of self-leadership in the academy, it was often marginalized in part because it was considered a self-evident concept. Well, everybody already knows this. We don't need any more instruction on it. And yet what experts are increasingly coming to find is that not only do we need it, not only does everybody need it, but even at the highest levels of the organization, we need it.